Hello everyone, welcome to Shubhra Ranjan IS, myself Karuna Mishra and I take the classes for science and technology here. I have started this series to make you understand the very basics of sciences. Uh, we will not be understanding uh, the hi-fi terminologies associated with, but the very very basic understanding of concepts such as which we have done earlier, what is an atom, what is nuclear fission, what is nuclear fusion, why these uh, type of energy sources can be an answer for uh, the world's energy needs etc. Now continuing with that, today I will be explaining you the very basic concepts of biology starting with the cell biology. So whenever I talk about the cell biology, the first thing which comes to my mind is the structure of the cell. Now structure of the cell, cell which is also called as the fundamental unit of life. This fundamental unit of life is responsible for all the organisms, the living, breathing organisms for making different types of tissues. These tissues, they make different types of organs and all the organs together make a human body. So it is the cell, then the tissues, then the organs and then the human body or any other organism which is a fully functional organism which exists. So when I talk about cell, the people who should be credited uh, are Robert Hooke who discovered and coined the term cell back in 1600s that is 1665 but it took almost 200 years for Robert Brown to discover the brain of the cell or the most important functional unit within the cell that is nucleus. So the nucleus was discovered in the year 1831. Now let us understand uh, how this discovery was done. So it is believed that Robert Hooke by using the microscope that he had developed himself was looking at very thin wafers of the cork, uh, cork which is generally used for plugging the wine bottle. He was basically uh, observing that and he uh, observed these small cellular structures which he named as cell and that is where he realized that these this, this the matter is made up of these small cellular structures which are cell and hence we have got the term. But then when I look at the various structures within the cell, it is the nucleus which plays the most important role. I, today I will be discussing about three major components within the cell that is the cell membrane and the cell wall, the nucleus and mitochondria. In the upcoming videos, I will be discussing about the other parts of the cell as well. So it will be more of a discussion video. Uh, if I ask a question, what is the difference between a virus and any other microorganism? The first thing that should come to your mind or any aspirant's mind is that the viruses need a host body in order to survive and replicate or reproduce. Why is that so? because of the absence of membrane or cell membrane which is also called as plasma membrane. So as we know within the cell you have the outer layer which is called as the cell membrane or plasma membrane which is present both in the plant and the animal cell. In the plant cell you have an additional layer which is called as the cell wall and that will be a discussion for another day what is the significance of the cell wall and how it makes a difference within the plant cell and the animal cell. Now this cell membrane is like a portal to the outside world. Whether it is the inflow of nutrients and the outflow of the waste material, whether it is the exchange of the gases, exchange of minerals, exchange of water, everything happens through this semi-permeable membrane which is called as cell membrane. It is semi-permeable or it is selectively permeable. What does it mean? That it only allows certain type of products to enter and exit the cell. Only certain type of products can enter the cell and only certain type of products can remove or will be removed from the cell. That is the role of the cell membrane. Now cell membrane also gives the structure to the cell. Cell membranes forms this outer covering so that in the cell, in the liquid or jelly type of substance called as cytoplasm, the various cell organelles can survive. If plainly speaking, what basically constitutes a healthy cell, it would be cell membrane, nucleus or DNA and cytoplasm. If any cell has these three components which is cell membrane, cytoplasm and some form of DNA or genetic material, it will be termed as a functional cell even if it does not have such elaborate 
स्ट्रक्चर्स विच आर प्रेजेंट इन कॉम्प्लिकेटेड क्रीचर्स तो इसका क्या मतलब हुआ इसका ये मतलब हुआ कि एज लॉन्ग एज आपके पास ब्रेन है आपके पास कोई डीएनए यू नो स्ट्रक्चर है बीट आरएनए और डीएनए और आपके पास किसी भी तरीके का जेनेटिक मार्कर है जेनेटिक मटीरियल है और आपके पास अगर साइटोप्लाज्म है तो आपका सेल फंक्शनिंग होता है अब मेरा सेल के अंदर सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट होता है वो होता है न्यूक्लियस न्यूक्लियस को हम थोड़ा डिटेल में भी पढ़ेंगे जब हम जेनेटिक्स के बारे में पढ़ेंगे बट अभी अगर मैं देखूं तो इन दिस न्यूक्लियस विद इन दिस न्यूक्लियस यू विल फाइंड दीज स्ट्रक्चर्स दी स्ट्रक्चर्स दिस इज बेसिकली क्रोमैटिन मटीरियल एंड दिस क्रोमैटिन मटीरियल कंटेन्स डीएनए वॉट इज डीएनए डीएनए इज दैट कॉम्पोनेंट और दैट पार्ट ऑफ द न्यूक्लियस विच stores as well as passes on the genetic information from one organism to another or its uh, you know offspring to wo jo genetic information storage kahan par hoti hai it is stored in the dna and this dna basically acts as that storing device now this dna is basically stored in chromatin material chromatin material stores the dna and dna contains this genetic information in the form of genes and genes form the basic unit of inheritance so i have understood membrane membrane which is the outer layer is important for giving the structure then i have understood what is nucleus nucleus contains the genetic material it acts like the brain to the cell it is responsible for giving commands to the other cell or within the nucleus i have chromatin material chromatin material contains dna and dna is nothing but set of genes together which have the genetic information the third most important component of the cell is mitochondria now mitochondria as you remember is also called as the power house of the cell now why it is called the power house of the cell because it produces atp that is adenosine triphosphate which is called as the energy currency which is responsible for producing such molecules which help in the metabolism process to kyun mitochondria important hai why mitochondria is important because it helps in the metabolism it helps in producing the energy which is necessary for respiration and for other processes that are to be carried on by the cell we will be continuing with the other parts of the cell and the uh, important aspects of understanding cell biology with our next lectures and in the forthcoming lectures my appeal to you is get your basics rights in order to understand the science and technology better thank you so much have a great day